Hello, gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Gentleman Masterclass. I am your host, Mark Antimate, and in today's episode, I'm going to show you my brand new black Oxford shoes that I bought from a made in Japan brand called Regal. <music> Here's the bag. The branding Regal has changed in the last couple of years. Very well known and famous inside of Japan. One of the most recognizable brands of Japanese shoes. Off the shelf shoes. They do do some custom made shoes. But to go as so far as to say very bespoke. Like they're going to make a wood block of your foot shape and then make something specifically for you in that regard it's not going to be up to one thousand two thousand dollars worth of quality on these shoes but they are pretty good these are just straight out of the store but they do have custom like i said you can have things made to your specifications within a certain degree let's go ahead and show you the box real quick you got the Regal branding in the bottom left hand corner. And here it has all the information about this shoe product, the color black, the design number. If you check out this reference number on the Internet, you'll be able to see these shoes more closely on their blog, on their website and throughout miscellaneous Japanese websites. So this shoe name is called the W41E. And I'm taking it that E represents how wide this particular shoe is. BH, this also stands for black as well. The size, 26 and a half. Right after this video, I'm actually considering bringing these shoes back. And I'll tell you guys why in just a moment. When you open up the box, you're greeted with a little bit of documentation. They have like a little blog or a little pamphlet of information inside of here for shoe care something about the regal history and some other information let's go ahead and put all that to the side and here we go pull out the beautiful shoes here this pair cost me about three hundred dollars and well we're going to get into that in just a moment Let's pull this out. Let me go ahead and put this lid back on here real quick. And we're going to stack these shoes right here so that they're in plain view so that you guys could see them quite easily. So the reason that I'm thinking about bringing these back, I'm very satisfied with them, but I bought them at the end of my shopping day and the store was getting ready to close at 8 p.m. on the prior Monday that I had bought them on and unfortunately I only had a little bit of time left to make a decision either buy these or just anyways I was kind of rushing myself but then again I wasn't rushing myself I was inside the shop for I would say about 40 minutes trying on shoes looking at different selections and I kind of narrowed it down to this but as soon as I purchased these shoes and I was getting ready to walk out the door a little bit past eight o'clock mind you I was paying for these shoes as the shop was already closed at that point in time I had noticed another shoe that costed two hundred dollars more than this they costed five hundred dollars and they were called Regal the Master and I just I fell in love with them just from eyesight walking out the door and I said well before I go ahead and put these on and uh, make my return void where I can't return them anymore if I was to wear them just don't wear these just keep them inside the box go back to the sh uh, shop which is going to be today immediately after this video 
go take one lance one last glance at those shoes called the master and see whether you like them or not more than these try them on look at the whole fit and finish and judge them side by side to see if it's going to be more suitable for my needs when i was looking at those shoes out of my peripheral vision yes they were a lot more beautiful but these shoes right here i believe are probably undoubtedly more comfortable so you have to weigh style against function there and i will be wearing these on a daily basis i did buy these black oxford for for work purposes so we're going to see how that goes but if those masters turn out to be a comfortable fit something that i can wear all day long for you know a full work week every week then uh we'll see how that goes whether or not i pick them up and also i found a regal factory outlet i'm gonna go pay a visit to that one as well just to see if they have a very similar shoe or if not the same or you know something that's extremely similar to this but for a much cheaper price that i could get away with but this one pretty much ticks most of my boxes and i'm quite happy with this but I bought this at the Regal store in Ginza, which is probably the most high-end shopping place right here in Tokyo. All right, what I want to do now is I want to take you guys around the shoe. I don't think I've ever done a shoe video like that before. I have showed you guys how to shine up a pair of shoes with these right here. These are my favorite brown pair of Oxfords. It took me a long time to find these, and I was quite satisfied with the purchase. We'll see if I'm just as satisfied with these as well. But I showed you how to shine the shoes and I showed you briefly, you know, the look of the shoe. But I never told you about the different parts of an Oxford or what makes an Oxford shoe. So we're going to go ahead and do that in today's video. Let me just pick up one of these shoes here and go ahead and show you. So there's three main parts. This whole top part of the shoe right here with all the leather on it. This part of the shoe is called the upper, and the upper is divided into three different parts. Here, below this line, this is called the cap, and this is the part that you put your feet, uh, you put your toes inside of this part, obviously, and this is probably the most rigid and hardest part of the shoe. You can wax this one up to your heart's desire, and the wax is not really gonna, it's not really gonna crack because when you bend your foot, to walk you are not really going to crease or bend this part of the shoe so you can wax it up quite good to a very nice mirror shine so that you could see yourself inside of it the next part beyond this beyond this line right here this is called the vamp and this is the part of your foot that you do bend when you walk and this part creases very easily so that your walk is a lot more comfortable if you were to put a lot of wax on this part of the shoe it will start to crack up after a while if you were to put too much. So you don't want to do that. Usually with this part of the shoe, you just want to put some nice black shoe cream. Whereas you put black wax polish on the cap toe part. And finally, after the cap and the vamp, you have this part called the quarters. You know, your shoelaces are here. And I have six eyelets. And it closes up my my vamp quite quite nicely got the inside of the shoe there nice little cup shape here a good thing about a good pair of oxfords preferably you would want to get them inside of a good year welt a good year welt is a type of stitching that's going to go around the shoe so that you know once this bottom part this uh this outer sole wears out you could simply keep this part of the shoe and you could do away with the whole lower part of the sole, throw that away and get it, get it restitched to a whole brand new sole and it would be like wearing a brand new pair of shoes. Now usually the stitching on a Goodyear welt is going to go at least about 75% of the way around the shoe from this part of the heel. It might, it might start here. And then it's going to go all the way around and be stitched to the heel on the on the opposing side. And on these pair of shoes that I particularly bought from Regal, that 
that stitching, that Goodyear welt stitching that goes around, for me, it's kind of a gift and a curse. It's good in the sense that for me, mine is actually 360 degrees of stitching. So it goes fully and wholly around the entirety of the shoe. But whereas it does go 360 degrees around the shoe, it means that this stitching inside the back, this is not going to, you know, the back part of the shoe is not going to lap over this part of the heel as much as you would like it to. This could be a little bit closer to to where this part ends. There's kind of a little bit of a gap that you can see inside of there. People are not really going to notice that, especially people that don't know a lot about shoes. So it's not going to be a big thing to them. But it is a lot more beautiful, whereas uh, where if you don't have that gap that is going to be there. But you pay a little bit more money. And they can overlap the leather over the stitching just a little bit more. And you're paying for a more sleeker look if you were to do that so that less of the stitching is shown. All Goodyear welt stitching is good, but some could be better than others. If you were to take a close look at the stitching, depending on how small and how close the stitching is to one another is how good the quality is. Usually when it's hand stitched, it's going to be a lot more closer and when it's machine made such as this, you know, there's going to be a little bit more of a spacing in between each stitch and it might be a little bit thicker, but still not an issue at all. Now this straight toe cap Oxford, it does have this straight toe stitching inside of here that's separating the, the vamp from the cap. But also you could get it without this stitching as well inside of a whole cut shoe. But the whole cut shoe seems to be a little bit more of a formal type of wear that you're not going to want to wear to work because it's a little bit more upscale than that. It's more like something that goes with a tuxedo or an evening jacket when you're going out to dinner at a very nice restaurant or some type of function or ballroom dance. The straight toe cap with this separation here, this is, I'm not going to say casual, not at all, but it's more business-like. The stitching across this shoe is very consistent. Here it's double stitched and it's also double stitched here that is separating all parts of the shoe. Consistent in size and in space, so it looks very nice. There's also some stitching here. It doesn't really serve much of a function, but it is there and it could be different on different pairs of shoes, such as the brown shoes that I have. Let me put this down real quick. You'll see that the stitching goes inside of kind of like a U shape. This is called a swan's neck and it's purely just an aesthetical type of thing, but it looks very nice. Whereas on these black Oxfords, it's just a straight line. Two more things I need to talk about before closing out this video. The back of the shoe, it has a center seam on the back where the leather has kind of been wrapped around. It kind of helps with making the shoe. A whole cut shoe that doesn't have anything, it might have a center seam. Or if the guy is really professional, the cobbler or the, uh, the shoemaker, it's not going to have this seam at all. But usually this seam is here on most pairs of shoes. And on my brown pairs of shoes, it's, it's like a double center seam. And this is purely stylistic. Instead of just having one, it has two that goes from bottom to up. One more thing that makes a beautiful pair of shoes is this part here. There is a big dimple inside of this part. The, the bigger the dimple, the more stylistic and the more beautiful the shoe is going to appear. If it's just very flat, it's going to look like a basic generic shoe and it's not going to be that appealing to the eye. It's not going to give your foot a sleek look to it. But, you know, you take a pin and you put it here up against the shoe and there's quite a gap that is inside of there. I like to have this dimple here and I like to have it as big as possible, but... It's very hard to make this gap, especially with machine made shoes if it's not handmade. And the way that they have to stretch the leather around, 
you know, the more money you pay, the better this gap is going to look. Inside, very nice. I like these shoes overall because they are very comfortable. It has some ortholite insoles on the inside and it has like a nice outside rubber sole. So this is made for standing up all day. So this one has function as well as style to it. And this is the reason that I might keep these shoes. But then again, I'm going to go take a look at the master and we'll see how that looks, whether I buy that or not. Anyways, gentlemen, I thank you for taking this shoe journey with me about taking a look at Oxfords today and learning about Oxfords. I will see you guys in the next one and we will talk more about shoes. And until next time, gentlemen, salute to you wherever you may be out in the world. And as always, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy. Hello, gentlemen, Mark Antimate here for Gentleman Masterclass. I'm here to let you guys know the good news that from this point forward, we are going to be launching a style consultancy. Not to be confused with an image consultancy, we are purely dedicated to making sure that you look your best each and every time that you step out of the house. With our different courses for different categories, you will be able to partake in a session that is going to teach you about the different aspects of style to make sure that you are at the top of your element. The first category is purely about men's dress shoes. For the price of 40 US dollars, you will get a one on one video conference call for the duration of minimum one hour to make sure that you know every single aspect and faucet of what goes into making sure that you purchase the very best men's shoe that you possibly can for the money. Everything that you need to know about that one particular category will be taught within that one single session. So essentially, it's a one-time fee to learn information that's going to last you a lifetime. So come on over and book a session while spaces are available now. Write to me at gentlemanmasterclass at gmail.com. Anyways, it looks like our time is up for now, but I will be seeing you guys soon. Salute to you wherever you may be out in the world. And as always, gentlemen, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy.